Uh, hi, everyone. It is five o'clock, and I just want to welcome everyone to the Inner Artist Coog Pack with Dustin M. Regal, where we will be painting an awesome painting of an ocean. And I will let Dustin take it on from here. Excellent. Thank you very much, Timothy. I think I should probably start by introducing myself. I see at least one, maybe two of current, possibly former students. But for the rest of you who don't know me, I am Dustin Regal. I teach painting and also 2D design uh, here at WSU Tri-Cities. Uh, I got my graduate degree in studio art from uh, WSU over in Pullman, and I'm originally from Illinois, where I got my undergrad degree. Uh, and on probably more personal note, I guess, so it's not so it's not so professional. I'm also from since being from Illinois. I'm also a really big Cubs fan, so I'm pretty excited for the baseball playoffs to start tomorrow. So I guess to sum me up, I enjoy painting. I enjoy teaching painting, and I like the Cubs. Uh, with that, I will like to thank uh, Timothy and the rest of SEB for putting this all together and also uh, asking me to be their painting guest. So I hope everybody has their pack of supplies ready to go. And before I kind of dive in right off the bat, I think I kind of want to go over some of the uh, supplies, just so we're all on the same page before we start diving in. We do have our handy dandy easel, which that's actually a really nice tabletop easel. I had to use a slightly different setup, something to be able to mount my document camera on just so it can have a good view, because here soon, once we switch over to actually diving into the painting, I'll be able to have one camera looking at me as I'm explaining things and then also a nice zoomed in image of what we are doing. Uh, we have our palette, which will be quite helpful. Also within the paint brushes, you got a couple of these things. These are your palette knives because it's always much better to be mixing your paint on your palette with a palette knife because it really does help. It's, it's just it's just good brush care to not be mixing your paint with your brush because what that does, it kind of crams paint up into the bristles. So uh, utilizing palette knife really does help to prolong the life of your brushes. And then we also have our brushes. I put my brushes into a jar here, but do know on our pack of brush, this is actually a really nice variety pack that uh, it's actually color coded You'll notice the blue handled ones are acrylic, red handle or watercolor, green handle are for oil, and the teal color is for all media. So I actually pulled out all the blues and the teals because that'll work best for the acrylic paint that we are going to be doing. And then we have our nice supply of uh, the, full, the full spectrum of paints. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to have put some water in your cup because we are going to be needing that. I have some water in here and it's also not a bad idea to just have like an extra jar, an extra cup of spare water if you need to add a little more to it because I only put a little bit in there because when you're cleaning your brushes off, I don't, I only got that much water in there because you don't need to be, I'm not cleaning my brush all the way halfway up the handle. So you typically only want to be putting the water in about as deep as your bristles are. Also, just a wad of paper towels and or some old rags. I have plenty of old t-shirts that I've cut up that I use for painting rags for whatever it is I'm doing. And I think that's a good, uh, overview of materials. We also have our 8 inch by uh, 10 inch canvas, which everybody should have been sent an image of the uh, ocean sunset that we will be doing together. Though keep in mind, this is, this is only a guideline. Our expectations aren't necessarily to 100% copy that. That is just to 
just to give us some direction, but there is complete creative freedom for everybody out there. Before I switch over to my document cam to where we start to dive into working on our painting, does anybody have any questions on materials? Okay. I'm gonna go with no news is good news. So let me pop on over to my document cam. So now, perfect. So now you can kind of see what's going on. I kind of got my image of what I'm basing it off over on the left. And I got my canvas right here as your nice little sheet that came with your supply states. Uh, you always want to have a good sketch to paint from. It's kind of the foundation of what it is you're doing. But with that in mind, like I've already stated, our goal isn't to 100% replicate that. It's just kind of our, our guideline for what we're doing. So I'm actually gonna start off by kind of getting my horizon, horizon line situated. And then from that, start to get some uh, shapes of some waves rolling in. Right off the bat, I'm already going to kind of have a little of my own creative freedom because personally, this, this horizon line is kind of kind of close to the midpoint. Me personally, when it comes to landscapes, visually, things tend to be a little more appealing having the horizon line almost like at the third, at the third mark. And what I mean by that is if you can like imagine your canvas, and if you notice the painting we're doing is portrait style. It's funny, we're doing a landscape portrait style. And what I mean by portrait style is the canvas is up and down, not left to right. So by a third, what I mean by that is if I break this into like three equal parts, I'm gonna go like roughly a third up and I'm gonna get myself a nice horizon line. From there, probably the next, the next main part is probably our sun. And then we're gonna kind of start to sketch in a few other of the aspects, which would really help us as we, as we move along with our painting. So kind of get the sun. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna actually have the sun breaking the edge of the canvas, but that's just, that's just me. And some of you out there may have some painting experience. Some of you may have a decent amount of painting experience, and some of you may have absolutely no painting experience at all. The great thing about what we're doing with this painting is I'm gonna be doing it in the impressionist style. And uh, for any of you, those who aren't fully versed in art history, the French impressionist, that's when right after the camera was developed and they realized, oh, the camera can do realistic images so much quicker and so much cheaper. So it kind of freed painting up. Now they can be more, more gestural, more exploring into exaggerating colors. So we definitely are doing this in the Impressionist style where it is looser, it's freer. We are definitely working from dark to light, thin to thick, which is a big, a big method within Impressionist painting. And I love doing Impressionist painting with maybe those who may not have a ton of painting experience because it's a great entry level painting style that nine times out of 10, the, the student is amazed at how well their painting turned out even when they didn't think they had much painting experience. So I got my song going on. I think I'm gonna kind of work in some of those wave crestings happening there. I'm not gonna be too specific. I, I wanna be more, more specific on placement and not worry too much about shape because shape can be adjusted as we start working the paint on. Mm -hmm. 
up there. Maybe we can have some of those smaller waves. Just simple, basic, uh, linear perspective. Things get things get smaller as they recede into the distance. So to help give the illusion of that depth happening within the wave crest, I've like slowly kind of made them a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. There's even some other stuff going on here. Now I'm going to start to work in some clouds. I'm not going to mimic again. We have, we have creative freedom to do what we want. I'm probably not going to work in 100% of the amount of clouds that we do see within here, but I'm going to kind of start to pick out some of the main ones that I really like. And as we work on layers of paint, then we, we have our own prerogatives to kind of keep adding on to it, if you so please. And I'm going to start by some of the the bigger, the bigger, more important ones. And don't think, don't think you have to, uh, you have to draw super lightly because you don't want, you don't want lines showing through later. We're gonna, we're gonna end up putting enough paint on here that you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see those lines left behind. And even some like. circular clouds kind of working in around this super bright sunset. I'll put a I'll put a couple of them in there, but ultimately I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draw every single one, but as long as I got a good map, you kind of want a good the, the foundation of your drawing, it's more of a it's more of a good map to how you're gonna follow once you start putting your paint down. Pretty good. I'm going to leave out some of those little ones over there because as I start working up layers, maybe I'll add them in with paint layer. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll like the slightly more minimalistic clouds. But either way, I definitely got a good map going on. I'm going to kind of, some of the lighter ones, I'm going to retrace over just to make sure I can still see it after we do our very first step. I hope everybody else's drawing is coming out just as swimmingly as mine. Okay, one of the main, even though I'm already, I'm already going to break one of my rules and for those of you who have had me before in classes. I, I make I make art and painting rules and then like I instantly go and change them it seems like. Uh, but that's because art is kind of it's kind of fluid in that way. Uh, so even though yes after this first step we are very much gonna follow that guideline of painting dark to light because that is a pretty common method when it comes to painting. We're going to ignore that for our very first step and we're going to do something that those French Impressionists 
really loved to do, and that was to tone their canvas. And what I mean by tone the canvas, we have our image that we're doing, and yes, there's a whole spectrum of colors going on in that ocean landscape, but if we just kind of simplify the ocean and simplify the sky, I would, I would say that majority, the sky is blue. And like, yes, there's yellow and then there's different colors in the clouds, but as a whole, that whole top half is primarily blue. And then we have the ocean. And yes, there is lots of blues in there. And then you also have the reflected highlights and crimsons and yellows coming from the uh, sunset going on. But that bottom half of the canvas, I would say, is primarily purple. So we kind of got a blue rectangle and we got a purple rectangle. What French Impressionists love to do as their very first step of the painting is to tone it in, in block sections like I simplified those two with its complementary color. So I actually have a handy dandy color wheel here. So if we consider that whole top section to be, it's just all blue, the complement of blue would be orange. So I'm gonna get to how I'm gonna tone it because we're actually gonna dilute it a little bit down with water so it's kind of like a nice thin wash that dries really quickly. You're kind of just gently staining the canvas. That's why it's called toning it. So then with that bottom half being primarily purple or violet, the complementary of violet is yellow. So I'm actually gonna mix up and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, a tone wash of orange for the top half and a tone wash of yellow for the bottom half. And what that does that being the initial layer, then once we start applying the normally thick paint that we're not diluting down anymore with water, what that does is even though we're probably, we're probably gonna cover up 99, maybe 99.5% of what we did with that tone wash, but those tiny, tiny little bits that may still peek through it being a complementary color, it's that, it's called simultaneous contrast. And I'm sure many of you have noticed when you put complementary colors next to each other, it's almost, it's almost hard to focus. Like it kind of has this weird vibrating effect. So we're actually gonna incorporate, that's what, that's what impressionists love. They love that idea of color play and how certain colors next to each other kind of gave this like visual depth, this visual vibration. Also, just one more note. Uh, where'd that go? Uh, never use black, especially, I'm always a proponent for not using black just because it tends to dull or muddy colors where we're darkening color with more color actually gives it more vibrancy. And that's another thing that happened with those French Impressionists. That was like, oh, it started around like the mid 1800s. And this was like when uh, scientific advances in like understanding the visual spectrum were happening. So then artists realized, oh, there's no black in like invisible light in the visible spectrum. There's no such thing as black. So because of that, they started doing all their paintings while never using black. So it gives it that, that much more vibrancy with their colors. So now on to toning we determined that we are going to do, because it's primarily blue, complementary color of blue is orange. I'm gonna pull out my cadmium orange. It looks a little red on my camera. My document camera it tends to have a little bit of a reddish tinge to it. So I'll read the colors out loud, even though it looks a little red. That's definitely my cadmium orange. All of your paints, if you haven't already started dabbling with them, have a little silver film on it. So be sure to get that off. What I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna put very much. I'm just gonna put like a little, a little pinky, a little pinky fingernail dollop of orange in one of my troughs within my palette. And I'm actually 
going to use my palette knife, one of our palette knives. And I'm actually like scooping just little bits of water. Obviously a palette knife is not that good at scooping water, but it does it so little bit because you don't want to overdo it. I'll show you my trough once I get my adequate amount of water that I'm happy with. Okay, you can see a little bit of water mixed in. It's probably about the trough's like almost half full. And then with my palette knife, I'm just going to kind of mix it in, try to try to get as many many chunks out as possible so it's as, as thoroughly mixed as possible. Now when we get to applying our orange tone, our orange wash over that top portion, do be aware, try not to scrub too hard over your lines because it is possible to wash away those those important lines that you just put down. So it's not this tone, this toning of the canvas, keep in mind that it is not vital that we 100% cover that entire area of orange. You're gonna see how I'm doing it. I'm taking uh, my blue handle brush that is the widest one that you have in your pack. It's, this big flat brush is really good for doing large washes like we're doing right now. I'm gonna dip it in there. I'm gonna start toning my canvas. When I get near my lines, I'm actually kind of being pretty careful. They smudge a little bit, but it's not that vital for me to get everything. Like you can see that I'm getting most areas, but it's not, the goal for this wash is not to completely cover or not to wash away those nice lines that you go, got going on. We're kind of just generally getting some good, good orange tints down that if they show through later with our blue is going to make for some really nice colored blue. I'm even kind of, if you're noticing, I'm even kind of leaving the clouds alone a little bit. Because I don't, I don't think it's that important to get the tone down for that. Still got, I still got some left, so some of the some of the thinner areas I'm actually gonna pop back in. Don't be don't be afraid to paint around the border. I always like I always like to make sure the the face gets plenty of paint, and who cares if we get the edge of our canvas a little a little schmutzy with paint. I don't think Bob Ross ever used the term schmutzy. Okay, look at that really nice orange tone. So now, later, when we start working in the sky, any any, even though we're going to cover up a vast majority of that, any tiny little bit that comes through is really going to be gorgeous. Now, whatever little extra orange I have, I actually am just going to, I like to keep a clean, a clean palette. So I'm actually going to, knowing that I don't need that wash again, because all our future paint, we're not diluting it down with water. So I know I'm not going to need that orange again. So because I'm not going to use it again, might as well clean it off while it's still wet. Got my brush, I'm rinsing it off in my cup of water. And then I got my 
rag that you don't want to be too rough because you always want to take care of your bristles. What I do is once my brush is wet, I kind of just take the cloth and I just give it a good, good pinch, a good squeeze, and that helps to dry it out. Maybe a little, a little spin around like that, and it's good to go. I'll set it back in my jar, let it dry. Maybe, oh, I will be using it again here soon once I mix up my yellow wash for the bottom portion. So for that, I'm going to use the primary yellow out of our kit of paint. And I probably even need to do less than the orange I did. And I, and I did a smidge too much orange that was necessary. And we even got a little, a little space, a little less space there. So I'm going to do just the, just the tiniest little dollop there. Like a, like the size of an aspirin. Same thing. I got my palette knife, which will gingerly scoop out some water. It's no big deal if you're using your same water that you just rinsed your orange brush in, because that tiny, minute bit of orange in that water is not going to affect the color of that wash. Same as before. Tiny little dollop of yellow little bit of water in there, not as much as last time, because I have a smaller section to do here. And then mix, 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 mix. Sometimes those bigger chunks, if they're not mixing in, it's good to like pull them to the edge and kind of like smush them. That really helps to get them to start dissolving. So it's a nice uniform wash that we get. So stir, 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 smush, smush, smush. It's a, good, it's a good method to go back and forth when it comes to mixing paint. Smush, smush, smush. Stir, stir, stir. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife. And now, got my big wash brush again. Same thing as before. I'm gonna concentrate on the overall area. but I'm not gonna to be too rough with the lines I have drawn, nor similar to the clouds, I'm not gonna be sea foam, I'm not gonna to concentrate too much on that. I'm gonna kinda of leave those be. Look at that. Looks like we got an apocalyptic uh, ocean side view. Fire orange sky and acid yellow seas. But that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna bring it back to the we're gonna bring it back to the bright side here soon. I'll probably continue my yellow on over here, still still kind of gently ignoring the sea foam. All righty, look at that. I'm not gonna need that yellow wash again, so I'm gonna keep a clean palette with my rag, kind of soak out whatever little bits were left. As we move forward, because we're not diluting the paint down with water, we're not doing washes anymore. Because of that, I'll probably be leaving a plethora of colors on my palette as I work along, but because I will not need those washes again, I figured might as well clean it out so it has, I got the, I got the space for future colors. Clean my brush, bring it out a little bit, squeeze it dry.
too bad too bad we weren't doing a landscape that had uh, had trees in it because then I would have been then it would have been a lot a lot better opportunity for me to utilize some of uh, Bob Ross's famous lines of, of painting happy little trees but we're gonna we're gonna paint a happy little ocean so now let's start working now that we've toned our our canvas now let's go back to that that rule of ours of paint from dark to light and thin to thick. And what I, obviously dark to light is relatively straightforward, but thin to thick, I just wanna verbally explain that so then you have a good sense as I start to do it on the canvas. Because we're gonna be putting paint on top of more paint, it's better to some of these initial darks that we're getting down, it's good to keep the paint application pretty thin because you want it to dry relatively quickly because then we're gonna be putting more paint on top of some areas of it. So if some of these initial layers you put down, you put it down a little gloppy, a little thick, the term in painting would be impasto. That's when you're applying paint in a very thick manner. We don't wanna to be too impasto in the beginning some of those apostos can come later once we get to like the highlights within the sea foam and some of the bright areas in the sky. But in the beginning, in the darker tones and hues we're putting down, let's keep it a much thinner paint application because it's really gonna, it's really gonna benefit us in the long run. So looking at our work, our purples, some of those some of those really deep purples and deep blues within, within the ocean is definitely some of our darkest tones. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna start with, because we're gonna be starting with our dark blues and dark violets, on our paint, we actually have a couple of options we got two darkish blues and two darkish purples. So I'm actually gonna get all four of these, uh, a medium sized dollop going. So I have a couple to work from as I'm working in those darks. So it's our dark cobalt violet, our regular violet, our primary cyan, and our Fathalio cyan blue. Those are the, the four that I will be putting a couple of dollops in four different troughs so then I can start to kind of bounce between those four dark hues as we start to work thinly in those dark areas. So let me, as I'm sure many of you are dealing with, we gotta get that little fresh new paint film off of it. And as for the dollops, I'm probably gonna something like that definitely more than I did for the wash because now we're not thinning the paint, we're keeping it, we're keeping it uh, the normal consistency of the acrylic paint. But I'm always, a, I'm always a proponent of, you can always put more paint onto your palette. You can't put extra paint back into the tube. So it's always, it's always better to shy on the maybe not enough as opposed to overdoing it and squirting it all out. So I had my other blue, now I got my primary cyan. My violet. And lastly, for at least this initial dark layer, I got the dark cobalt violet. Okay. So now I got four dark cool tones. And what I mean by cool is on the color wheel, you kind of have, you have all your, you have all your colors and basically like this half of the color wheel is considered cool and that half of the color wheel is considered warm. So not only did these impressionist painters uh, utilize the play of complementary colors, 
they also concentrated on the effects of temperature, warm and cool tones. So right now, we're definitely working in a lot of these dark, cool tones into the dark areas. What I'm actually going to do, one of my preferred brushes, at least for one of this initial layer, at least it's a blue, one of the blue handled ones. It's a flat brush, so it's just got the straight, and it's kind of medium size, just so I can give a size relationship. It's in comparison to that big washing brush we were doing. This is the brush that I am now utilizing to kind of start working in some of these dark tones. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with that darker violet first. And then maybe I'll work in some of that blue later. And then because of how thin, because we want to work thin to thick, we don't need to put very much on your brush. Honestly, a little bit goes a long way. I'm always a proponent of allowing, though, mixing colors on your camp on your palette is important. I'm always a proponent of allowing colors to mix right on the canvas. So while that purple was still wet, I'm kind of coming in with one of my darker blues, letting it letting it kind of congeal together before that before that purple set. Even though there was that tiny little uh, wave crest foam going on there, I'm gonna leave that tiny little sliver of yellow toning there just to kind of be a little signifier to me like knowing, okay, later down the road, I know a little bit of sea foam's gonna go there. And we can actually like overextend, even though like the darkest areas of the ocean are kind of kind of limited to just right here. We're gonna over exaggerate the darkness because then once we start working in lighter, we're gonna partially overlap because there is some of that really dark blue still poking through in areas throughout the ocean. So I'm not gonna. I'm not going to stop where I think I see that dark blue and purples, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of popping back and forth between my darkest purple and my darkest blue, allowing those two to kind of mix together on the canvas as I, as I keep moving along while keeping my paint well, well spread out because we want to keep it thin for this first layer. So even though like the dark blue in the, the horizon line, that dark blue kind of ended pretty close to the midpoint, I'm still going to exaggerate how far it goes over because I know I'm going to come back and cover some of that up later, but I am going to work on crisping up the horizon line a little bit, though the horizon line is not vital right now to be perfectly crisp because we can re-crisp up that horizon line once we start working the sky in and the paint for the sky can come down and really, really crisp that line up later. So I still want to keep it looking good, but it's no big deal if it gets a little, a little, a little wavy, pun intended. Okay, so even though in the image, like that dark purpley blue, I mean, it kind of stopped right about there. I still extended that way over. So now I'm going to start working in, working down in here, and then like underneath the sea foam crest, there's really some of that same dark purple that I'm seeing. And like I keep telling you, I'm going to exaggerate the overall size because I know I'm going to be covering it up with a majority of it with some of that 
lighter paint down the road. And as we're getting closer, I'm actually going to pop over to that blue that we had. That was a little bit lighter because things are kind of lightening up a little bit as we get closer. It's not a big difference in blues, but just those just those subtle differences really make really make a pain. I'm not too I'm not too worried about keeping the lines around the shape of my sea foam super crisp because when I come back in later with those light colors and light tones to shape our sea foam I know that I can I can cover up these these jagged edges of my blue I'd rather I'd rather overpaint my blue a little bit into those shapes as opposed to underpaint into it cuz then then you'll you'll come up short and see some uh, see some areas that you may have missed with the blue. Though, like I've said, little bits of yellow here and there is actually beneficial. But there is always that fine line between too much underpainting tone left behind, not enough. We're gonna. We're gonna find that happy balance. Okay, so I'm working in where like the shadow, the shadow of the wave cresting there. And as our little guideline sheet states, if the light is a warm light source, the shadows are going to be cool. If it's a cool light source, the shadows are going to be warm. We have a very warm red, yellow, purple sunset. So because of that, we're having the shadows within the crest be on the cool side of the color wheel, like I was explaining. And we get a nice and dark blue and purpley going on. Get some of those shadows set for underneath that wave cresting a little bit further back. Pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to kind of work on the shoreline. The shoreline is, uh, it's not as, it's not as purpley as what's been going on a lot in the sea. And honestly, some of the sea, I'm probably going to jump in with a little bit of that slightly lighter violet, just to kind of add a few, a few more of those purple tones in there, especially in the, the shadow of some of those wave crest there was definitely some good some good nice vibrant violets going on okay i'm pretty happy with the way the uh dark area of the sea is going on. I'm actually going to take a moment. You always don't want, especially with acrylic paint, you don't want your brush to get too caked up if you keep, if you keep working and don't rinse it every so often because then some of the, some of the edge of the bristles start to get a little dry and then you get, then you got a gunky brush. So even though I'm still going to be working the same color paints, it's just a helpful tidbit to when you're working with acrylic to still occasionally clean your brush off just so you can kind of start fresh. Okay, so now I'm going to be working in the darks on the, the sandy shoreline, which is pretty dark in this painting, but it's not as purple as what's been going on in the sea. So I'm going to, I'm basically going to stick to, uh, 
stick to my blues I got going on. There's a little purple in there. I may, I may dabble in a little purple later. For, for some of these initial darker layers, it's not as big of a deal to uh, whether what or what direction uh, you are applying the paint because a majority of it's going to kind of be covered up as we slowly work lighter and lighter. But a good thing to keep in mind is as we start working lighter and lighter, it's always helpful to like apply the the paint like in the direction of the form so like shape the cloud notice like with the, the direction the waves are going brush it in the direction that it, it wants to be brushed right now not a big deal to kind of just get these dark tones down because a lot of these brush marks will kind of end up being concealed I do want to add a little bit of purple in there because there is like some tones of purple happening in there. I'm happy with that. I'm actually going to bounce back because I'm seeing some more purples happening in there that I don't, I don't want them to feel neglected. It's not worse than a I'm pretty happy with that. And even though we do have some darker tone. Timmy, he went away. <laughs> Did he got disconnected? Um, yeah, I believe so. Uh, I uh, informed him that he was disconnecting. Um, he hasn't said anything back yet, but he should be back. I, I don't think he would okay. go for a coffee break at this time. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't noticed, and that's why he's not back yet. <laughs> Imagine he finishes like half the painting by the time he realizes he's gone. Oh, my. How are you guys doing with your paintings? I think I'm like struggling a bit. Just keeping. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but mine is a little wonky. 
Yeah, I'm a little lost, not going to lie, but yeah, I'm kind of there. You also my, yeah. My, my first wash was pretty wet, so <laughs> everything kind of blended in a little bit for me. Sorry about that. Hopefully we don't have another internet hiccup here. I hope that that brief interruption kind of helped give everybody a chance to to stay stay caught up. I heard I heard an issue about that initial wash being a little too watery. That, that happens sometimes. It's no no big deal. And even if even if some of these dark initial layers that we're putting in uh, tend to uh, mix in a little bit with the possibly still wet initial wash, no big deal. Yeah, at this point, I'm going for very abstract. Good. Yeah, that, that's why. That's why I, I love teaching the impressionist style in a in a like a, an event like this because unlike trying to do something super representational, then a lot of people have too much expectation on themselves and then they, they sometimes become too hard on themselves because they wanted it to look a certain way. Impressionists, like you have complete creative freedom to be as loose and as gestural and as exaggerated in the colors as you want to be. And by no means are you uh, intended to a hundred percent do exactly what I'm doing. I'm kind of just a guide. You're you're welcome to take your own creative freedom and and, a, and adjust things at will. Okay, so now, as I was saying before, my internet decided to be a little uh, a little quirky there. Uh, there's really no darks in the sky that are comparable to the deep darks of the ocean and the and the land. So. I'm still not going to worry anything about the sky just yet. We'll we'll get to that soon once we start getting to the midtones within the ocean because we just want to do we just want to do like the next step up in that value scale. And so with the value scale, um maybe some of those like slightly lighter violets and slightly lighter blues uh going on within the ocean is where I'm probably going to start going. So I still have, I'm still, I'm still sticking with my, my cool violets and my cool blues, but what I'm going to incorporate is a little bit of the yellow, oh, not yellow, a little bit of the titanium white. I will add that into one of my palette troughs here. about a dollop that much. I really don't need much more than that. All I'm going to be doing is with my brush, I'll just be stealing little bits of white here and there just to kind of lighten it up a bit so I'm not putting down the exact same purple or the exact same blues that I have already done. I'm just kind of, if you can imagine the value scale of these of these colors, I'm just kind of doing the next the next step or two up on that on that staircase of values. So I think I'm going to start with some of the purple. So what I'm actually going to do is kind of, I'm probably going to mess up my white a little bit, but it's no big deal because I'll probably get little bits of purple and blue in it, but I can always clean it out and start fresh. So I'm just taking little bits of white, kind of, I'm not mixing it thoroughly. Like you can see on my brush, I still have white and I still have purple. I'm going to, I'm going to allow my paint application to kind of do some of the mixing, which is another big technique that those French Impressionists really love to use. Just kind of working in in different areas where I kind of see it. I'm not concerned with covering up all. I want to definitely leave behind a lot of those dark areas that I had going on. But I'm going to kind of start 
shaping the ocean a little bit. So now that I'm starting to shape the ocean, this is where you kind of want to brush it in the direction of the ocean. So because like the waves are coming in this way, I'm kind of going to be, I, you almost want to brush with the direction of the waves. So a lot of my ocean brush marks are going to be kind of put at the pitch or the angle, as you can see my brush handle right now. I'm kind of just sectioning off areas, allowing allowing some of that initial color, dark tones to show through, but I'm still covering up a decent amount of it, especially as I get closer to myself in the perspective. Still just, you know, like little bits of purple, little bits of white, maybe a little more purple. I've got a little bit of both going on on my brush. Look at that, I'm already getting some, let's see if I can, getting some good, different purple values going on in there. The, uh, the document cam doesn't do it full justice, but it's still turning out pretty good. What size brush are you using? So I'm still, I'm still using one of my blue handled ones, and it's just like a medium to small size flat brush just for size comparison. This is the, the biggest flat brush that we use for washing. So I'm using uh, the same color blue handled brush flat just a little bit, a little bit smaller. Okay, I missed that part. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, not, I'm not doing fine detail yet, but I don't need that. I don't need that big honking flat brush that much anymore. That's just kind of for those initial tone layers for doing big washes. Yeah, I've done, I've done a lot of those values. Purple. Now I got to remember to steal some white and also work in some lighter, some of those, some of those lighter blues that are still relatively dark on the grand scheme of things, but they're a little bit lighter than that. Everything is in relation to that, that dark abyss on the far right horizon line. Everything kind of, kind of works up from there. So same thing, stealing a little bit of white, stealing a little bit, a little bit of blue. Allowing, allowing these different sections of paint that I'm putting down to overlap and kind of work with each other. Sometimes lightly overlapping, so you're still revealing a little bit of what you did before. With these early layers, you don't always want to 100% cover up what you, what, what you just did on the previous layer. You kind of want to leave a a little wiggle room in there. Still stealing some whites and some blues and pretty close to the point where we can start working out of this uh, excessive amount of cool tones that we've been 
we've been working with here soon, we can start working in some of those nice, those nice warm, those nice warm reflections that's happening. A great technique with acrylic, it's called dry brushing. And it's kind of an oxymoron because technically your brush isn't dry because you have some paint on it. But what I mean by dry brushing is that you're, you're brushing with very minimal paint on it. So you're just kind of like gently scratching the surface, all like kind of like wipe off some excess paint. There's still paint on there, but it's not like sopping wet full of paint. And then like some of these really dark areas, I'll just like ever so slightly, just kinda, kinda rub it along the surface of the canvas. And you can see that because the, the canvas itself has a texture to it, you're kinda gently leaving behind some lighter pigments on the very top of that canvas texture and that really helps to add some added dimension to your painting. So every now and then over a dry section, it's not a bad idea just to kind of do a little bit of dry brushing of, a, of maybe a slightly, slightly lighter tone. And for some of this, some of the sand up close, I'm kind of going back in with some of my dark blues and purples just because I want to, I want to re-darken it up some. It's a little, a little too, a little too light for my liking. But that's just my personal preference. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so now I think we've we've reached the point in the value range where we can actually start to now work in like the darkest areas of our sky, which ultimately are not as dark as what's happening down below. Meaning my brush, never want to let it get too gummed up. I'm probably still going to be using that, that same smallish medium uh, flat brush for a lot of these earlier layers, it's a pretty, it's a pretty universal and handy brush to be doing. So now I kind of looking at the sky, like I'm going to find these areas that are the darkest blues of the sky. And that's kind of the tone I want to go with. So I have my primary blue and I got my white, unlike what I was doing before down here, because here I was just doing some like subtle mixing. So I was kind of just with my brush, stealing some white, stealing some blue. Because I want to actually start to work a little more uniform, I'm actually going to take some of my blue over to a new trough. And then swipe some of my white. Kind of, even though we have a sky blue, cerulean, even though we have a cerulean blue too, that's getting a little too light. I don't, I don't want to use that just yet. So I'm actually taking my primary cyan and just tinting it with white. For painting terms, tinting your, your paint means you're adding white, shading it means you're adding black, but we're not shading it. So if you, if you ever hear me say tinted, I know it's kind of confusing because if you tint your car windows, you're darkening it, but it's actually kind of the opposite when it comes to painting terms. When you want to add white to your paint, you tint it. Okay, so now I have a tinted primary cyan, and I'm going to kind of work that into some of those, those darker, darker areas of the sky. I'm, I didn't get noticed, like I'm not, I am not being precise 
or very neat right now. I'm just, I'm just slopping it on. Not only is it beneficial in this impressionist style of painting, not only is it beneficial to work thin to thick, light to dark, it's also a, a very good way to, for you to work vague to specific. So you'll notice as we get into further layers, I'll probably be a little less, a little less loose, a little less flippant with how I'm just kind of throwing paint down uh, because I'll, I'll, I'll kind of crisp things up. I'll slowly get more and more specific as the, the evening of painting moves along. I'm actually leaving behind quite a bit of that toned orange showing through. And I'm being pretty sloppy, but it's still going to look fantastic. Sometimes it's amazing how sometimes when you just, when you just turn off expectations in your brain and you kind of just, you just attack it with reckless abandonment. It's amazing how a lot of times when it comes to art, how well things turn off when you, when you stop listening to your brain. Unfortunately, that's not always a skill that's easy to teach. but it sure can be handy. As you can tell, I am putting little to no delicacy to what I'm doing here with this like initial dark blue. Honestly, that's probably what I'm gonna do because as things, as things work in closer to the horizon line and work in closer to the sun itself, things tend to lighten up a bit more. So what I'm probably gonna do is do another step up of blue and start to work that in. So I'm gonna do another step lighter. Just rinse my brush so it doesn't get too dry and take me. Now, I'm going to get some of that cerulean blue. That's a, that's a good enough light blue. I'll probably end up the next layer, not this one, but the next layer, I'll probably add some white to it. I'll tint that cerulean blue, but for this next step, I'm probably just gonna leave it straight cerulean blue because it's a it's a good it's a good step lighter than that uh, than that tinted primary cyan that I had going on for doing all of them. Still using my my preferred uh, small to medium flat brush. I'll start to I'll start to add different brush styles once we start working out of our vague layers and start to work a little more specific. In this blue, I'm probably going to be a little more thorough than I was with my last blue, where I was kind of just like. Yippee! Let's get it all down. I'm gonna start to work it in a little more thorough. And this is where I'm gonna be a little more precise. I'm crisping up my horizon line. I'll probably crisp it up one more time because I'll probably do a little bit of the next step lighter of this cerulean blue because if you notice like the left 
from like the midpoint to the left side of that horizon line is like a little bit lighter than this blue. So we'll probably do another, another value step up down there. For now, I'm gonna try and get a good horizon line. Do your best and forget the rest. I don't think that was Bob Ross. I think that was Tony Horton. Still good advice. Pretty satisfied with that horizon line. A few little lumps. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now, now that I went slow and crisp that up, now I can go back to getting some different tones of blue. Even when I'm going over some of those darker blues that I've already put down. I'm still not covering them up 100%. This, this style of painting is as you work up layers, you adjust and modify and, and alter previous layers, but typically you don't altogether 100% just recover what you just did. I'm gonna kind of like, work in but you can see like I'm leaving some areas that those added values of blue really really makes for more dimension more like, dynamic color play happening within your painting. And as you can see, like if I kind of zoom it in a little closer, there's still plenty of like tiny little bits of that orange initial tone wash that I'm still, I'm not, I'm not worried about covering it up 100%. Like each layer I do, I'm probably going to cover it up a little bit more and more. But in the end, there will still be tiny little bits still hanging out. I'm going to love it. just in case anybody momentarily steps away or possibly has their own internet issues. I'll probably be a little, a little repetitive about what it is I'm using just in case people don't know. Right now I'm still with my small flat brush and right now I'm working in like the next step lighter in the sky which I'm utilizing the cerulean blue uh straight up i haven't i haven't added any white to it just yet it's just a pure cerulean blue happy with how that's turning out. So now I can probably, honestly, I'm noticing, notice that same like next level up of blue that we just did in the sky. I'm noticing some areas 
in the ocean where that same blue is kind of being reflected, it's being mimicked. So I'm probably, this is not going to be too much, but I am going to kind of just work in in some areas that I that I see it, especially like in this this like bump out in the ocean wave. I definitely see a lot of that similar blue going on. A little bit, a little bit out there. We may not have, we may not have happy little trees, but we will have happy little waves. I don't, need, I don't need too terribly much going on there, but pretty, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to do next, I'm going to do the next one more, one more step lighter of blue going on in there. And then we're going to take a little break from blue. We're probably going to, we're probably going to come back to blue, but for now, we're going to take a little breather after one more. I'm getting ahead of myself. So my next step is going to be a little bit lighter of that cerulean blue, which what I can do is just take a scoop of that white, add it, and go ahead and stir it in. And that probably, that probably wasn't enough white, so I'm probably going to go about adding a little more a little more white in my palette. Okay. A good, good tint, a good tint of my cerulean blue. Add a little white to it. It's lightened it up some. Now I'm going to kind of concentrate on some of the lighter areas of the sky I'm seeing, which is definitely lighter along the horizon line, more specifically, like just the left side of the horizon line. I kind of, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it fade fade out, where it just kind of blends seamlessly into the slightly darker blue, more on the right side of our sky. being more, I'm working, I'm still not painting super thick, but because we're working thin to thick, I'm definitely not applying as super spread out thin as I was doing initially. Now I'm kind of more like I'm applying the paint as opposed to like wiping it really, really thinly on. I'm allowing it, I'm allowing it to be a little more opaque, not as not as transparent as some of them, but I'm still careful not to just like 100% cover up some of those other areas. And then that, that dry brushing technique, like I keep saying, is like after I kind of got these thicker areas on, of the lighter blue on the left-hand side, then I kind of just like gently dry brush and like feather it, feather it out to some of the, 
some of the other areas of this guy. Yeah. I'm digging that. Now I'm gonna clean my brush, and now it's time to start working in some of those some of those mid-tones of the of the warmer of the warmer persuasion. Hmm. Now, purple is one of those colors that can be either warm or it can be cool, depending on whether it's a purple with a little more blue in it or a purple with a little more red in it. So we do, we have cool purples in our ocean and we've already managed to get those cool purples down uh, on the canvas. And uh, now I'm gonna take that purple that I have on my palette. I'm actually gonna take a little scoop over to the new trough. Soon, soon I'm gonna have to clean my trough because I'm starting to get a little full, but I still have space. And now I'm going to take a, hmm, which red? I think I'm gonna do cadmium red. I'm a fan of cadmium red. So I'm going to take my cadmium red and mix. I'm going to probably put a little, a little down for me to, for me to feed from. And then with my palette knife. So now a purple, which purple is red and blue mixed together. I'm taking a relatively neutral to cool purple and I am warming it up by adding some more, some more red to it. Quick question. What color yeah. did you mix the red with? Can you ask that again? Uh, what color did you mix the red with? I mixed it with one of my purples, which I believe was just the regular violet. Let me check. Yeah, it was just the regular violet. So I mixed my cadmium red with some of violet. Okay, thank you. Yep. So I took a, I took a cool purple and I've made it uh, a purple, it's still purple, but now it's kind of hard to see on the palette. But now I've made a cool purple a lot warmer. I brought it, I brought it over to the warm side. I'm probably gonna start mixing up some of my some of my paint brushes uh, because in in basic uh, linear perspective like I mentioned before things get smaller as they recede into the distance so a lot of these like warm purple marks that are like further back in the ocean I'm probably going to be making them with some of my some of my smaller brushes whether it's a small flat or a small round. As I progressively work closer to the shoreline, it's visually getting closer to us. So to help give a better sense of depth, I'm gonna make my brush marks a little bit bigger. So I'll use that same medium sized flat I've been doing for a lot of things. That I'll use close up. And as I progressively get closer to the, the horizon line, I'm gonna start using smaller and smaller brushes because that that shrinking in brush size is really gonna help give the illusion of this, of this ocean just disappearing into the horizon line. So I'm actually gonna start further back. You can start close up. There's really no, there's really no benefit one way or the other. I'm just deciding to start back. And I have my warm purple, and I'm gonna keep it pretty. Diluted. Actually, as I'm putting this down, I like that it's a warmer purple, and I'm going to put it in a few areas, but then I'm also going to uh, make a lighter tint of it also. So here soon, I'm not going to be over excessive with this dark warm purple because I will make a tint of it here soon. But I am getting down a couple of areas where I do see some of that warmer purple. 
and I'm keeping my brush marks pretty small, kind of small and sketchy, almost like in the further in the horizon. And then I'll progressively make them broader and more, more deliberate as I get the closer, like now I'm getting closer and I'm being a little more fuller with my, with my brush marks. And then I'm even gonna pop over to my slightly bigger flat brush. For as I get nice and close. And that's already helping to give to give the illusion of some really nice, some really nice depth going on. Because now these, these layers that we're working on now, a lot more of these are going to be left revealed. I'm being more conscious of like the direction of my brush mark. So I'm like, I'm like brushing with how I know that like wave crest would be, would be rolling over itself right there. Okay, I got some of that warmer purple mixed into various areas. I'm going to clean off my brushes, but I want to bump that purple a little bit lighter, so I'm going to tint it some more. So I'm going to add some white to that same warm purple that I've been working with, which was cadmium red and your violet mixed together. Yeah, so now I still have that warm purple, but now I've tinted it. It's, it's a, lot, a lot lighter, lighter value. I'll start again in kind of the back of the ocean, the further part of the ocean. So I'm using one of my smaller flat brushes. Just kind of working it in in a few areas. I could probably even lighten it up a little bit more. It's not as it's not as light as I wanted it, but it's still a good value to have added in. Smaller marks further back. Larger, more deliberate marks closer up. Okay, now I'm going to warm that up a little bit more. And not warm it up, my apologies. I'm going to tint it a little bit more because I want that value to be even lighter. So I'm going to keep adding some more, some more white. Now I'm really mixing things up because now this time I'm actually starting closer up just because I feel like it. There's no rhyme or reason for that. So uh, because I'm starting closer up, I have my slightly bigger flat brush. And I'm working some of those nice light warm purples that's happening. Going with the nice, the nice flow of the ocean. I wonder, wonder if this painting will end up being like a, like a conch shell. Maybe we can, maybe we, we, we put our ear to the canvas so we can hear the ocean. I don't know if that's something Bob Ross would say, but it would definitely be something SpongeBob would say. Smaller, smaller marks of this light tinted warm purple. Smaller marks as we get further and further back. So now I'm gonna, because I have some of these warm purples 
mixed up and some of them are the reflections of what's happening in the sky, I'm going to utilize what I still have on my palette to kind of incorporate. And a lot of them are like the, the shadow areas of the clouds. Because of that, I'm actually going to like this cloud, like kind of the bottom right of that main big cloud there to the right has some of those purple tones going on. I'm going to kind of work that in. I mean, unlike before when I was just like ignoring the shape of the cloud, now I'm being a little, a little more deliberate. I'm applying the paint a little thicker and I'm, I'm working in, I can, I'm, I'm setting, I'm setting the nice dark edge to the right side of that cloud. I'm setting the edge of the shadows. And there's a little bit going on like underneath this cloud, not as much in that one. And not all the clouds have the, the same thing going on nor am I following 100% what I see going on in the clouds in the painting that we're kind of, we're kind of following. But like I've said numerous times, that painting is just a guide. We, we're making our own paintings. That's just to kind of, kind of help us along, give us a little, a little direction and then we can kind of, we can kind of take it from there. I'm kind of hitting the edges of the clouds that would be the opposite side of the sun because that's like the, the purplier shadows going on within the clouds. Nice. That's turning out pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to work in some of those deeper yellows. It's time to it's time to really go really go all out with our with our warm tones because our warm tones, at least in this painting, tend to have been a little bit lighter. And because we're working dark to light, we naturally for this specific painting had to kind of work from cool to warm. Well, let's start getting some of those dark yellows in there. I'm actually going to start with a little bit of yellow ochre. It's kind of a deep, more earthy yellow. And I'm going to kind of, some of the more yellowy areas, I'm going to set that down just so then I can build up some lighter yellows on top of it next. So starting with my yellow ochre. Just a, don't need very much, just a little, a little dollop. I'm gonna Whose yellow was that? That was a yellow ochre that I that I'm doing. That's the first yellow I'm doing. So it's kind of like the the one of the darker yellows, and it's like the more earthy tone yellow. Okay. Thank you. Yes. We're actually going to kind of start in the sky right now, and you know what I think? Yeah. Let's see what brush do I want to use. I think I'm going to actually. Just because now I'm going to start working more specifically in some of like the yellow highlights happening in the clouds. Uh, the angled, the angled brush actually is really nice because you can you can like roll it over with that point sticking out, and you can it's a it's a versatile brush because you can you can brush it flat so it covers a big area, or you can turn it up to just that point and do little detail. So now that I'm slowly being a little more refined with what I'm doing. I kind of want to have a brush that I can work a little more finer detail in. 
So I'm going to start by kind of working in some of this, some of this deeper yellow into like the, the sheen, the extreme, the extreme brightness of the of the sun. That sun, that sun's so bright, just like just like a, looking at the regular sun. It's usually so bright that you really can't define what the heck's going on just because it hurts to look at. So that's we're gonna have like a gradient of yellow that probably like disappears almost into white just because I, we want to get that that effect of of that sun just being so so vibrant so radiant and right now it's okay with some of that yellow ochre being a little a little transparent to where it's turning some of the blue in the sky a little bit green i'm even like dry brushing it out a little bit where I'm just kind of changing just the slightest subtleties just because it, it gives the it gives the realistic atmospheric effect of like the, the sunset happening. I'm also gonna kind of work in some of the clouds. Yeah. I'm not gonna be too precise because I'll definitely work in lighter yellows that will start to crisp that up, but I kind of want to start with my darkest yellow. Nothing's, nothing's more satisfying than a, than a cloud that has the complementaries of yellow and purple, typically the yellow being the, uh, the brighter highlight and the purple being the uh, uh, dark shadows because then that's that's some of those famous tricks of those uh, impressionist painters uh, putting complementary colors next to each other and yellow and purple are most definitely complementary colors Pretty sufficient for the clouds. Now I'm going to kind of work in some of that dark yellow that I see happening kind of into that like first wave crest because there's definitely some nice yellows going on. And I'm kind of, I'm being very subtle because I don't want to like 100% cover up my purples and blues below. So it's that like very gentle dry brushing technique that I was talking about where there's really not that much yellow taking on my brush and I'm kind of just like it's almost like I'm cleaning my brush off on the canvas. Now I'm going to switch to one of my smaller brushes because I'm getting further out on the ocean to make things smaller to have some of that nice atmospheric perspective. This tiny little flecks of yellow here and there. Just kind of mimicking light reflection off of a off of a, a, a turbulent ocean. And then a little bit of a little bit of dry brushing to where I'm barely putting in yellow down. And now I got some nice, some nice transitions happening. And you really don't need any any yellow reflections from like this point to the right because the sun's there. So like that's the that's the angle of of light reflection. So there's really not too much happening over here. So don't don't worry yourself about getting any any yellow over there. You want to kind of keep it in the line of the sun's reflection zone. All right, now I'm gonna, I have a couple of 
dirty brushes pile up. We'll give it a cleaning. I'll bump it up to a lighter yellow. So I think I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for Naples yellow just yet. So I think I'm going to give my lemon, my lemon yellow a try. Let's see. Let's see how that, that value of yellow starts to, starts to work. Dollop with lemon. Back to my like medium sized angled brush because I'm kind of working in the sky. I kind of like the, the versatility of working broadly or turning it to the point to work a little more specifically. Brightening up some areas of the uh, yellow ochre that we had down, but not altogether concealing it. The lemon yellow is kind of a kind of a transparent paint, so a lot of a lot of what's below it is still visible. Things will start to become a little more opaque once we start adding some uh, some white to it for some of our really big highlights. But either way, the more values you have in a painting really helps to get a lot more dimension and, and believability. Because a painter, all a painter is, is an illusionist. We're just magicians. All we're, all we're trying to do is do the illusion of the three-dimensional world in which we live in on a two-dimensional surface. And yes, there's plenty of abstract and non-representational genres of painting, but representational painters are definitely just illusionists. work in just a little little bit of that not too much because there's not that much of that lemon yellow being reflected in the ocean but I am putting little bits here and there but not very much at all just little touches here and there okay need my angle brush now I think I want to before we get to really the lightest yellows, I think I want to jump in and kind of get some of those, those reds going on. So what I'm going to do, put a little more cadmium red on my palette. And let's see, it's not like a true red. It's kind of a, it's kind of a slightly purple red. It's kind of got this pinkish purpliness to it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to steal some of the same purple that I was doing for like the, the, the shadow area of the cloud. I'm actually going to, so there's a little bit of white in it. There's a little bit of purple in it. So I'm going to take that, and mix it into my red. Probably even take a little bit more. Which red is it again? Cadmium red. So cadmium red with a little bit of that, little bit of that purple that we were using in the uh, in the shadows of the clouds, just because the reds I'm seeing in there they're not like pure pachow red. It's kind of more of a it's kind of more of a muted purple red. So that's why that purple tone actually helps to 
get the reds to a little more of that, a little more of that tone we were looking for. Hmm, I'm probably gonna pop back to my my favorite medium to small flat brush because I'm gonna kind of start in some of the close the close areas within the ocean where I'm seeing some of this red. When you first start applying like a fresh color that you haven't been putting on the canvas yet, it's always good to just like just like squirting paint onto your palette. You can always put more on your palette. You can't put it more back in your tube. Same with applying the paint. It's always good to start off a little timid to just get a feel for how it's applying and then you can kind of work your way up. So I'm gonna start by doing just a little bit. Now I'm gonna, I can see what I'm doing but I wanna bump it up a little bit more. So kind of work it in some of those reddish purple highlights that we got going on in our, in our ocean wave. I'm kind of, as it gets further back, I'm kind of progressively making my mark a little smaller and smaller and smaller, giving that nice illusion of depth going on. So I work some red going smaller and smaller and smaller from there. Now I'm going to kind of bump up to my next tier of waves, getting a little further back. And same thing, just little little flecks of red here and there. I'm not, uh, the, the immense detail in an ocean, we're not we're not working for hyper realists. We're doing the impression of an ocean. So we are just doing little, little flecks of re reflected red and my marks get smaller and smaller as they progressively move to the right. And now I'm working behind my, my furthest sea foam crest. So now I'm really working my marks smaller and smaller and I'll probably even switch over to my smaller flat brushes I got going on here. I like the reds I got going on in there. Now, because we just painted the reds being reflected in the ocean, but we don't even have them in the sky just yet. So that same red can now kind of be worked in where, where you're seeing it. And where I'm seeing that red, it's kind of like in between the highlight yellow of the cloud and like the blue shadow of the cloud. It's kind of like sandwiched in between. If, if your cloud was an Oreo, one, one cookie was the, was the purple, the other cookie was the yellow, our red that we're going to be putting in is the uh, cream filling of the Oreo. Doesn't need to be a lot. Just little little flecks here and there. When we're gonna, once we start working lighter yellows in, we'll we'll subdue how how vibrant some of that red looks, and we'll also work in a little bit of a paler. A little paler red here momentarily. All right, so now with that same red mixture, I kind of got some good reds sandwiched in there within my clouds. Now I'm going to kind of bump that, bump that a little bit lighter by tinting it, so adding some white to it. So my, my white again is getting a little low on my palette. I'll do another dollop of white. And just because I have a decent amount of red there. It depends on how much red you have on your palette, but I'm actually going to kind of split that pile. So I still have that red 
but now I got another pile of that same red that now I'm gonna add white to so I can kind of get more of a more of a pinky tone going on. And now I got a nice, nice pink. I'll probably start in the ocean again with my favorite small to medium fat flat brush. And now that we're getting more and more colors incorporated in. Like I'm not, I'm being much more ginger, a lot more subtle with just like little, little mark making. I'm kind of just like making little flecks here and here and there. With those flecks, progressively getting smaller and smaller as, as the ocean recedes. That's really all I probably needed to do for the ocean. There's not, the, the ocean is probably more developed right now than the sky. So that's, that's coming along pretty, pretty well. So now I'm gonna kind of concentrate more on sky stuff. Now I'm gonna work in that same, that same pink color where I'm, where I'm seeing it within my clouds. This is where you progressively get a little thicker and thicker. This is where you can actually kind of leave behind some brush marks because that's that's some of the that's some of the key characteristics of impressionist painting is how by the time they get to some of those those closer on up to the final layers, like they're kind of just like they're kind of just like laying the paint down. I'm kind of just like scooping a little bit of paint and I'm kind of just like placing it. You're more or less like placing little bits of paint. That's looking good. Now I'm gonna start on working even lighter. Let's uh, let's get some of that some of that really pale, bright yellow going on. So I think the next one I'm going to do is the Naples yellow, which is kind of a, just a light yellowy tan color. Get a little bit of Naples yellow on my palette. And now because I'm working a little thicker, I'll probably I'll probably go through a little bit more of it. So I kind of almost did like a double, a double dollar. Going with, for the sky, I'm going with my favorite angle shader. So I can broadly apply it and I can specifically and, and delicately apply it too. So now I'm being pretty thick. I'm kind of just taking on some nice Naples yellow. This is where, though there's still like, it seems like, it seems like there's still a lot of area that still needs to be addressed. We're actually, we're actually on the home stretch here because now these, these highlights and applying them nice and thick in a pot and pasta like this is where things 
really, really loosen up. Try and be a little more gestural with it. Like you still want some crisp lines to like the, uh, the, the cloud edges, but don't make it feel so contrived. Don't make it feel so forced. Like kind of just let go a little bit. Have, whether, whether you have the confidence or not, sometimes you just gotta fake it until you make it. So just act, act like you're the greatest painter to ever live. And just having some of that confidence when you are doing some of these finishing touches really can go a long way in how the painting turns out. I'm leaving it, I'm leaving it pretty chunky because I know this is like my, my maybe second to last or third to last application. So there's, there's getting some nice chunky marks going on, going on in there. We want it to have, we want it to have a little form here. I'm even throwing in a little, a little dry brushing of my of my Naples yellow just to kind of soften up and give the give the illusion of like an atmosphere around this around this sunset. A little bit, a little bit of dry brushing. It's almost it almost gives like the the atmosphere like a little halo around the sun, which I'm sure Many of you have seen almost this like atmospheric halo sometimes around the sun. Ah. There is some of that napoli yellow happening now in our ocean, in our ocean sea foam. So now I'm gonna start throwing some of that down there because that Naples yellow that we have in the sky is reflecting on that light sea foam. And similar to how I'm doing the clouds, I'm kind of shaping it pretty forcefully and pretty directly and also leaving a pretty, a pretty thick application of paint where you can very much see the, the brush marks like carved into the wet paint that you're putting down. This is really coming together. Now, I am going to mix some white, some titanium white into that Naples yellow that I got going on to even do another step lighter of the yellow we got. I'll probably do. I'll probably do quite a bit of white just because I want it to be pretty darn light, but I still want it to have just a ever so soft tint of yellow. I'm actually going to put a little more white down. That'll probably be good. I'm also, just because Naples yellow kind of it's, it's a necessary yellow for that, that specific layer that we just did. But some of that brightest bright kind of has more of an intensity and a luminosity to it as opposed to kind of more of a dull or light mundane Naples yellow. So not only did I mix a bunch of white into that Naples yellow to really lighten it up, I'm gonna steal just a touch of that lemon yellow. I don't want too much, just a little touch of it because that'll That'll help add some like some vibrancy, so it's not just a uh, 
a tinted lighter version of Naples yellow. Now it has some like sunny lemon yellow. Still kind of using for the sky. I'm still using my favorite angled shader. Now I'm, now I'm really making it impossible. Like I'm kind of just kicking it out. I'm not even gonna like form form the sun. Now you're almost like you're almost like frosting a cake. This is this is what this is what those impressionists did. Some of those very later layers. Some of them even they applied it so impasto toward the later layers, they didn't even use a brush. They would honestly just sometimes take their palette knife and just like, like they literally were frosting the cake. If you want to get that, that uh, traditional to some impressionist style, you are more than welcome to kind of take that prerogative of of uh, utilizing some uh, some palette knife application, but it's not necessary. And I'm gonna work that light yellow into the clouds on like the very lightest edges of the clouds. Taking it on nice and thick. Let it let it have some real texture to it. I'm even going to kind of like wipe my brush off a little bit of the cakey paint because I was doing impasto. And like kind of in the sky, I'm actually going to like do some of that gentle dry brushing again just to kind of help give like that atmospheric aura of the, of the sun setting and kind of lighting up the, the, the sky in the immediate area around the sun. Now I'm going to bring some of that same lightened up and tinted uh, Naples yellow and start to work in some of those lighter areas in our sea foam. Still, still applying it nice and thick. I'm, I'm not even like brushing it on. I'm literally just like using my brush as like a mini shovel. And I'm kind of just like scooping some paint, placing it down, scooping some paint, placing it down. Similar to what I did with the, uh, the sky, I'm gonna kind of wipe off some excess paint off my brush and kind of do a little bit of dry, like I'm kind of taking some of the wet and thick paint and I'm kind of giving a little bit of swirl to the sea foam because it kind of trails back a little bit in some areas and that kind of gives a better, a better appearance of a of a naturalistic looking wave rolling. So I'm kind of just, don't, don't swoop it forward. You kind of want to just swoop a little of it back and like in the direction going against the wave rolling in. And that helps to give a little more of that like sea foam trailing behind the wave as the wave rolling in. And one of my I have two more steps I'm going to do, and things are things are really, really looking good here on the canvas. One, I'm going to pop backwards a little bit, just because there is some blue, some blue shadows happening within the the sea foam. So I still have a pile of that like cerulean blue with some white mixed into it. So I have like a lighter, a lighter cerulean blue still on my palette. If you happen to not have any more of it, no big deal. All it is is the cerulean blue with a little bit of white mixed in. 
but I'm actually going to kind of just like ever so gently add a little bit of that like shadow that's happening to your sea foam. It's, it, it gets it gets a little less apparent with like the sea foam as it gets further back, but definitely the close up sea foam has some of that nice like blue shadowy shape to the sea foam. And again, nice and thick. I'm just I'm just shoveling little bits of blue and putting it down. To get a nice, a nice added fullness and a full feel to the the sea foam. Now the sea foam is not just like a blob of light maples yellow. Now it's got like this dimensionality to it. It feels it feels like it. You can almost just like reach down and grab that sea foam. Okay. Last thing, we're 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 bringing it home now. We're gonna do a little bit of pure white in some of the in some of the brightest areas we got going on. And I still have some pure white going on on my palette. If you don't, feel free to squirt some more out onto your palette. But I'm gonna kind of especially like in the sun and my naples yellow is still wet because i caked it on so thick so you're kind of allowing some of this pure white to mix with the still wet yellow but we still want some of flecks of white kind of happening within the brightest part of the sun now even take some of that white few areas of the clouds, just tiny little impasto dabs of white. Here and there, just tiny little details. Just those little flecks of white really can give some, some serious form to what's going on here. Even, even some of that white can be uh, can be used not only in the sun, some of the, the the highest highlights in the clouds, but also just a little bit here and there on our sea foam. And there you have it, a beautiful French Impressionist style sunset over, over the ocean. Does anybody have any questions? I'm sure some of you are probably still still working on some things, which is perfectly all right. As for me, let's see, how are we on time? Hey, not too bad, only like eight or nine minutes over, but that you can probably, you, you, can, you can account that to that one, uh, that one uh, internet hiccup that happened. So honestly, that's probably pretty good right on time. How are we doing, Tim? We are doing good. Uh, love the painting. And uh, I just want to say before anyone goes, uh, thank you for participating. It really means a lot to 
me and Seb as well. Uh, my name is Timothy and uh, I'm a uh, Seb coordinator. I, I've, I've been creating these events with my coworker Stephanie and Evelyn and we've been really working as hard as we can to put these events out for you and with uh, amazing people like Dustin helping us out we really appreciate it and we also really appreciate you guys also participating with us because we want to have the best experiences can, can I show you my painting and you guys can tell me what could I do to make it better yeah um you can um just uh i'm gonna just say one uh one thing uh another thing as well so right now i've just uh entered in into the chat the survey link and you can click that and uh fill out a survey to uh, tell us how well we've done what we can work on and what you think and um right now uh, i'm gonna ask everyone to share their painting right now just on zoom for fun but i really encourage you to uh stay after a little bit because i'm going to be ending the recording and then talking to only the individuals that are on zoom because there's a, a a giveaway for only those on zoom right now so i really encourage you to stay all right uh just unmute your mic and I will take care of uh, showing your painting. All right, Anthony, I see yours. I'm going to share yours. That looks great. Hey, excellent. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to do Catherine next. It looks like eggs. <laughs> Catherine, ooh. Nice. Nice. I, I'm loving it. I, yeah, definitely, I definitely like the, the loose brush marks going on in that one. And next we will do Jess. Excellent. Uh, Man, these are all great. Thank you. It looks really nice. Thank you. All right. Uh, Adriana, here we are. Ooh. Landscape. I need to put more yellow, but <laughs> That's right. you can always go back and touch up a little more yellow. But I do like I, I, every, everyone so far. I'm I'm really appreciating you know, really picking up the impasto and some of those later light layers. I can see that it is being it is being caked on pretty thick. So excellent job. Yeah, my. Um, and who do we have next? All right, Elizabeth. Ooh. Nice. Excellent. These are, these are looking great. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely um, kind of want to see, like, uh, are, are they all submitting an image? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be announcing that uh, just up next. Uh, is there anyone else? Anyone All right. Willing to show. Uh huh. Uh, uh, sorry if I mis mispronounced. Razan. Yeah. So we're like two doing it, but you can show Razan. Oh. All right. And. Oh wow. Fantastic, man. He's all Both great. Great. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, is there anyone else that is? I've got mine. Hopefully you can see it. Over. You have to share in order to get entered into the giveaway. Ah. One, uh, one sec, who is the one that hasn't shown their painting yet? Um, me, oh, Maria. Maria? Yeah. I'm, I'm just having a little bit of difficulty finding your name. It's okay. Oh, it's Maria. Oh, super oh long here name. you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here. Sorry, that's uh, super zoomed in. <laughs> um, 
Okay, I'll show you guys my painting, but it's really bad. I kind of got lost, but. Oh, no. It looks good. It looks Anya? good. Never say your painting's bad. They're all good. Thank you. <laughs> they all look amazing. Thank you guys for sharing that with us.